Right, it's been a it's been a while, but welcome to Inside the Deal. Uh, I'm doing the hosting today. Mick Gledel uh, is away at the moment, but Dad, we've got a few questions. We've been sent uh, five in particular from Matt Shaw, who did who actually hosted the show um, a couple of weeks ago. I think that's uh, that show did brilliantly. So he sent us five questions to go over about the where the Super League market and transfers are at the moment, and we'll start with the first one, which is one of the biggest. Uh, I'd say shocks uh, at the moment. Toby King's loan deal to Wigan. It caught everyone's by surprise. Um, how did you get that deal done? Why was it not permanent at Huddersfield? And um, why is it a loan rather than a permanent deal? Right, again, like, you know, and, and, and let's hope the parties that be don't mind me talking about this. I think they don't. I think I've, I've, I have get a couple of rollickings for trying to... It gives, a, gives people an insight into how that deal will, will be done. So I think simply... Um, he's enjoying it at Huddersfield. Toby's enjoying his time at Huddersfield. Thinks it's fantastic. Enjoying uh, Ian's coaching. Enjoying the, the the lads. Enjoying you know being back at home as well. That's where obviously Toby's from. Uh, but Huddersfield wanted the deal to be permanent. Uh, well, that didn't work for Warrington. Uh, it didn't really work for Warrington to make it a permanent deal. Um, I think Toby. When, you, when you're at Toby's, I don't know if it works like this, I'll try and be honest, so I think it's like a marquee signing, or a marquee, not this year, next year. Toby, because you're homegrown, you can be less on the cap. So I think that after this year, that can be, if they wanted to go back to Warrington, that would be, it'd be very, uh, it'd be a very good good value uh, on the cap. Um, and secondly, Wigan were happy and Wigan always wanted Toby. They wanted it before he signed his renewal at uh, at Warrington. So we had about five or six offers. One of them that Warrington were, uh, Wigan were really in. So Wigan had let it known that if it ever come another chance, they'd like to sign him. I think they, they see a lot of Toby. And the value of centres, Joe, now if you look at it, there's probably only six or eight centres at, you know, around that level. I don't think Toby's had the best season. I think whatever happened at Warrington... You know, and it certainly wasn't a personal thing with Daryl and Toby. It just didn't work out for whatever reason. But the value of a centre is, is is amazing in our game because we haven't got any. It's a simple, it's a simple one. There's not enough to go about. So Toby becomes even more valuable for a club like Wigan. Uh, so Wigan made it clear that they'd be interested. So we we got talking through Warrington. It's all transparent. And Wigan said, listen, we'd love to take him on loan for a, a, a year. I, I made sure that they met each other. And I wanted to make sure Matty and Chris and Toby, you know, got on. And there's going to be a little bit of something there. And they did. And they made it clear that they saw a massive improvement in where they thought they could take Toby, which is what Toby wanted to hear. You know, why have why's my form dipped a bit? It just seemed to be coming back now. But what's happened? Is it is it my mind? Is it whatever? And Matty fancies the challenge of getting Toby to be the best centre in the, in the country. So once that went through, we spoke to, you know, we spoke to Fitzy right through it. They were happy to do it for 12 months. I spoke to Richard Doulis and said, look, I'm sorry, because you want to do it permanent, it's not going to work for you. Uh, and Rich were brilliant, as he always is. Just said, yeah, look, like the lad, I hope he has a great year with us to finish off. So another one of them deals where you look at it and it's just been a tick, tick, tick for everybody, really. Listen, if Huddersfield go on and win grand final and Toby scores two in final and, and he didn't stay, he'd be thinking, wow, that's Huddersfield, you know, should have, you know, maybe. But I think it's probably the right for everybody. Brilliant. And then um, next question is Will Maher has been announced as leaving Hull KR. Um, what do you think next for Big Will and uh, what do you think of Hull KR's recruitment in general for next year? I'll try and explain this to people who don't understand how cap works cap we've got I think it's okay I might play off 1.9 cap so if you average that into 32 man squad any mathematical person would tell you what that means Will's a proper money baller probably unappreciated a lot I think he's averaged 20 games a year for three years for KR and Will wouldn't be on anywhere near average money you know be on what I call money ball money so you know I think the new coach uh, who's coming in wanted leg speed Wanted a different type of prop. 
I think if Danny had stayed and, 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 and you know, Tony, I think, you know, they thought a, a, a little bit about of what role Will can have in that team. But I think Willie's got to go with his own thing and he's, he's looking for leg speed. He's looking for fast players. He's looking for the... That's the way the game's going in Australia. They're looking for leg speed. They're looking for size. Will's got the size. Uh, what I would say is, if you look at the market over here, you know, would a player like Will Mayer, who, who was very, you know, if somebody said to me, what about Will, that's a durable. He never seems to get injured. He's, he's always there. The lads love him. He's got a thing. He's, do you want Will to grab somebody by the neck and, and, and get angry with them and, and punt, you know, and be that prop? That He's not going to do it. Not in his nature. But he's a very brave man when it comes to carrying first, carry off his own line. He's always sticks his hand up. He's a fitness fanatic. He's great for culture. I think we'll get a Super League gig because, because, you know, where Will is with his money, he's not asking for monopoly money. If not, you know, that's when we'll, we have to talk and me and Will are talking every day. It'll be championship and it'll be somebody who's got some, uh, you know, wants to go back to Super League because that's what Will wants to do. He wants to play in Super League. So, uh, sorry to see him go. I'm sure the old, I hope the old KR fans, uh, it's the last game on Saturday, it's the derby. Uh, it's the derby and I hope that Will gets the you know, the stand innovation off the fans that he deserves for being that type of player. He's always turned up and he's always given his all for that club. So I hope Will gets a good send-off. Brilliant. And then next one, Brad Dwyer to Hull FC. Is that a move that makes sense for the two clubs? Yeah, surprising Leeds. You know, I've always thought, why did Leeds not fancy giving Brad another deal? And then we, you know, personally, for us at me we've got Corey Johnson, so we... Sorry to Brad, but our, our, our you know our priorities, our man getting game time. But it's been sensational. It's been sensational every time he gets a chance and gets enough time on pitch. He's a player, he's Brad. If you look at all, the one thing you'd say about all is the the rook speed's not great. You know, Danny's at that age now where he's not going to be picking and rolling and going through. He's more of a passer and tackler. If I had all them big bodies at all, I couldn't find a fast hooker who can get on his front foot. Well. Brad's the number one in the country, probably getting on front foot and making you commit your send defenders. And when Brad's, you've been there at Leeds, yeah. Joe, when Brad's picking and rolling, he's unplayable, actually. Yeah. You know, exactly. and, and as an halfback, I'm going to kill Brad sometimes. I'd be like, oh my God, you know, I, I want some, I want some ball, a gaily type. I'd want a lot of ball, you know, and, and, but God, if you've got that fast rook and you've got Brad Dwyer, I think it's a sensational signing. Uh, I spoke to James yesterday. The CEO and he 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 thinks it's going to be you know he he thinks it's going to be one of the best signings they've ever made for the for the money and everything that the deal made sense. Uh, behind every every move, Corey Johnson, our man gets his chance. So that's it. Selfishly, that's the way it is. Brilliant. And then um, obviously one of the Wakefield have had quite a few players announced as leaving. Uh, for next year, what, what what do they do after losing so many players? How do they go about strengthening their squad? I think it's going to be hard. I think they've left it late. And that's because of the way the, you know, the, the league set up, Joe, for, for not knowing who was going to go down. Then they've got a recruiting space of four or five week. The World Cup's going to come at the right time for Wakey. I think they're gambling on picking six, seven players from World Cup, but I don't know how many quotas they've got uh, going. I'm sad to see Big Dave go. What an occasion, they reckon. You know, I text him and he's texted me since and I, I wish I'd have been there now, but, you know, whatever. But I, I, I think he's been probably the top three overseas player ever to play in our comp. He's got to be Wakefield's best ever overseas for me. He's got to go down as a, a, an absolute legend. Big call off Wakey, you know, and Dave, you know, Dave... How can I put it, Dave? Probably in the end, it was Dave's call in a way because I could see the way it would win. But David's been such a, a, a part of Wakefield. Do you know what? People talk about loyalty and, and both sides could on Wake and Michael and, and David. They stayed pretty loyal together. Dave had some massive offers to go in between this last two or three years. And he stayed loyal, which I think is, is, is something that needs to be talked about. Wakey's got a hell of a job, Joe, to, to, to recruit quick here and get a team so they're not in the same position next year. Now, they might be safe because if we, we think it's going to happen, ING go with two tens the year after, it probably won't matter unless you finish bottom. They might say, if you finish bottom, you go straight to Super League B. But Wake, you might think, oh, well, however, you know, that is going to be a tough gig to get at least. The, the, there were a couple I didn't get. The lad who just gone Leeds, you know, 21-year-old, I think you've got his name. I don't know if you've got his name, the lad. 
that that to me is is your crown jewels, your young men, uh, and, and losing out Bachelor to Hulk KR. He's been sensational. Yeah, and you're losing him to Hulk KR. You, you're looking at the others and you're thinking, you know, you've got you, you know, could I talk about it? You've probably got to a Lewis Murphy. Well, we can't even, you know, we, you know, it's just. <laughs> Uh, we Some said it. We said it six months ago on the show, so we've been proved right. What's mm-hmm. happened? It's happened, and it's done it. Corey Hall's just. I hope I can say this, and I hope you don't tell me off. But he's he's been met up to England nights nice this morning. He's rang me. He's really happy. Just booked about a ten grand holiday to Jamaica, so we might have to cancel it. So he's <laughs> he's got a big call to make. But he's uh, that just what a reward for them lads. You know, Lewis got in there two week ago. You know, it is just unbelievable. So wakey. Are doing a fantastic job of starting to develop young players. I'm starting to notice it a, a, a bit more. That's only half at skill, unfortunately. Half at skill's keeping them. Yeah, that's the skill, and that's what Wakefield. You know, for me, I'd, I'd have gone and, and and maybe a year ago and secured the future of them by every one of them. You know, to lose some of these young men to other clubs. You know, I, I, and people say it's inevitable. Maybe it is. Maybe top four clubs I've got like football. If Saints, Wigan, Leeds, Warrington come in for a player from a bottom four club, that's maybe just the way it is. And fans might say, well, we've got to watch him play and that's fantastic. But you know, it, you, you've got to have a bit of ambition in your own club as well and make sure you secure that young talent. I don't think... I'm meeting Michael on Friday. I don't think Michael would be happy you know, about losing a young man at 21 to, to, to thing and bachelor, you know, for whatever the it reasons. And so hard for him, so hard for him because they didn't know if we were staying up. It's only last week. It's Toulouse have got the same problem, but another way. Toulouse yeah. have got to lose all their Super League players. The lad who's gone Leeds, another couple of... And they've got to try and secure them to stay and come back the year after, but then also get people in. They haven't got the £1.8 million sky money. So somebody's... There's a parachute payment, but it's nowhere near that. Yeah. So someone's going to put a lot of money in it to lose to stay in the league. So you know, it's. I'm happy it's winter franchise. I'm happy. I'm, I think it's time. Don't think you can do it any other way. Uh, so I'm happy the game it's for players' as future, Joe. Who wants to be a player at Toulouse or Wakey three weeks? You're not knowing whether you're going to lose your full time deal. You know, we can't let that happen anymore. Still be a competition, but we've got to got to be strong. And and I and I've thought about this one, and I could have talked about on the full eight when we do it on Thursday, but. The biggest comp in the world of rugby league is NRL. And how many leagues have NRL got? One. Right. I know they've got the Queens and the other things, but they've got one league. So everything they do goes into, you know, this new team now it might be eleven, whatever teams it is. But it's the biggest comp in the world by they're probably twenty times us now. They've got the origin model, which is twenty times anything we've got. They're the world champions. They do it on one league. I know they've got the Queensland and the whatever and the county leagues. But the main thing that you watch on there is one. We're feeding three. We're feeding three 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 leagues. Probably it's time to maximise the top end. So it becomes so so I mean Sam will understand this. If if the whole game war bringing it into that, that's gonna be twice as strong. It might be even more cap money to attract even better players. I hope we don't lose the youth and all and, and the way we do things, but there's a debate to be had on and we can do it here quickly. This scares me. I even talked about this to John Bastian, which I will do. He's one of my confidentes when we talk about youth. Salford haven't got a youth plan. And they haven't got a reserves. So they don't play the system which they should be meant to. Well they do have a reserves. They, they do have a reserves, apologies, but it's not a youth, it's not filtered in by all pay as you play. It's not filtered in by an academy. So you look at this, and I read I read something about Bournemouth Football Club. It might be Bournemouth, so please, if it isn't Bournemouth, I, I apologise. But they're saying that they never went with the reserves. Uh, so a youth academy, they just went and got reserves and got all the players who have been released from top clubs, put them there. And This was six years ago, these guys turned it all around, and now it's worth, uh, reportedly, 60, 70 million. Well, you look at Salford, and they've obviously gone for mid-age squad players. 27, 28 year olds instead of having academy players coming through they've gone 32 man squad will carry 10 they'll play reserves but most of them are men all the rest of the lads teams are trying to get you through and Salford are into playoffs probably third favourites to win it with the form side 
we've got to have that debate probably on full 80. Like, how how should Salford be meant to do the same as the others? So let's, let's for instance, you've got all KR this week, you've got all Derby. You're going to see 10... You're right, you're right. Yeah, I'm thinking. Ten or eight kids under 21 playing that derby, which is a fantastic opportunity. You've got that against Salford not wanting to blood now. Would a 27-year-old professional be better for you on that day than an 18-year-old lad? Short term, yes. Long term, no. But I think we missed. We need to make everyone play on level playing fields because what's going to happen if Cass decide? We don't want to academy. We'll just go with the reserves. What about if Wakey do it? So then it'll become what we're all scared of within the game, that only four teams are producing youth players to feed every single other team in the league. This is what they've been talking about for two years. They've even said they're going to have regional academies. Would that work? Four regional academies and scrap everything. So this is all being talked about, which is scary for me. Because Salford could prove that that model works. Imagine if they won grand final based on not having no youth academy, not playing any youth players. What are the other teams going to save 400 grand a year? Are they allowed to spend that 400 grand a year they save on no academy, no scholarship, and put it into the top end? Is that fair? I don't think it's top end. I think the only way you could justify it is if they put it into the community, put it into the stadium, put it into making growing the league maybe not in the youth way but in fan support and I think you'd have to see no offence Salford I think you'd have to see to justify you'd have to see their fans be at least more than what it's at now wouldn't you you'd have to see but it is increasing on the back of the recent results I guess it's increasing yeah but you'd have to see I think you'd have to see the you'd have to see the fan support and the community side get really brought up if you're not producing young players in the game so you're saying like you improve other areas but yeah. don't have an academy but what if everyone else opt, opts out and we're left with Warrington, Leeds, Saints and Wigan to feed everything I agree with you. that's the issue isn't it well, that's... I think it needs discussing because if the Salford and it's worked twice by the way you know enough well, yeah, I don't, I, you know, said that they got to the final yeah it could you know they got to a challenge cup final you're looking and thinking you know it's it's quite would, would, would a Super League club be better off not not having an academy but linking in with the championship side and saying that's our reason you know there's, there'll be other ways that if the, if the new IMG and the Rugby League don't get a grip of it there's going to be new ways that'll come in and if that model works they'll go with it I'm telling you now get ready this won't be first if Salford pulled this off there'll be two or three other clubs who opt out I'll tell you now but you, I think what what was their situation when they made the final to, yeah. I think they didn't have I think they'd scrapped the uh, like, yeah, yeah, and we'll get told more on this you know but I think they'd scrapped the academy I think the academy got scrapped Lewis Roberts this year and I think it all went that would have been four four years ago so I think Watson got to the final with this this model so it's it's it needs looking at they, they need to look at it serious because I've heard a top a top club said to me well, why should we do it we're not actually getting anybody through when we do get them through, we don't keep them for that long, you know. So there's a real scary element behind it. Uh, I suppose the fans and the TV people do they want to see the Lewis Murphys, the Corey Hall? Do they want to see these Mikey Lewises? Do they want to see these young Jake Trumans? Do they want to see these young talent coming through? And at what cost? Because that's what the game needs to decide. And I think the new franchise system, if it comes in, they're going to have to probably put boxes in place where you've got to tick that box. And if you don't, you're not allowed. That's It needs proper leadership on that. But I feel as though, unless they scrap it all and go four, do you know, do you know what the idea about the four regional academies is? So they go Yorkshire, Lancashire, Montmagne, London, Cumbria. Cumbria, and they do four academies. And them four academies, they'd have all the players going into them four places. And then they'd be coached by... RFL coaches, uh, you know, and yeah. they'd be then implemented into the system on a draft pick sort of thing, you know, like uh, they'd all be said, right, they're, they're all available at 16 or 18 to be draft picked, which would be exciting, you know, it could be exciting. But then you're penalising the great lead rhinos, the great Wigan, the great, say, oh, develop young players historically for, for, the, for the world. You know, the, the Bradford, the, the, the produced players for the world. I think Bradford have produced... Four NRL players. I mean, it, I just can't get my head around that. That's still, you know, miles above where I am. But Leeds have produced 
probably four or five world class players, you know, top world class, plus probably 10,000 Super League players, 2,000 Championship players, 2,000 Champ 1 players, 20 coaches have all come through their system. You know, we've got we've got to look at the bigger picture in the historically thing, but that's if you want to talk about this is this is about retention though. That needs that needs looking at massively. Yeah. Well it does, you know how I feel about the reserve league this year. It's been a shambles, hasn't it? Yeah. Apart from one or two clubs, it's there's gonna be a whole generation of kids that end up just falling out of the game because of it. So it's gonna be sad if, if they don't do something about it soon. And we need some direction quick. Yeah, we do. Um, next one, uh, the, one of the big deals show me have done this year is Liam Sutcliffe to Hull FC. How did that come about? I don't know if we talked about this before, but if we haven't, I hope, apologies if we have. But no, no you're saying we haven't. You better memory than me these days, Jay. Eh? Uh, I would say Hull are. Uh, you look at Sutty, 27, 28, I think, 28. You look at Sutty, 6-3, centre, can play 6-13, full-back. I hope he just plays the centre. I think he's been fantastic since he got his own place. And what Leeds fans will appreciate, again, and I hope this you're, you're there Saturday, I hope Liam gets a standing ovation. I hope they remember what this kid's done. This kid has been a star from the 14s, 16s, 18s. In fact, Sutty, we'll try and get this out before Saturday. I want the top son. You owe me one. You owe me that top son. So make sure that, Joe, you give the top to Joe. I'll text you later on today. I'd love the top before you went off. That'd mean a lot to us at, at Show Me. It's been unbelievable. Without being, you know, Sutty were told to be the next Stevie Ward. Stevie Ward were going to be the next Kevin Sinfield. Kevin, you know, they've had to have pressure. Sutty were under pressure immediately to be the best player leads. have seen the next Danny Maguire. I watched Sutty, here's a little Sutty story. I watched Liam play against Hull KR when he was 17. Liam was didn't play a lot of academy games because they were that good. They had to stop him. He scored, he set up, they put about 60 on KR and Liam, I think he scored so many, but he set about eight tries up. We were all stood at Stanley and everyone were in awe. This kid who were already six foot one, just going through line every time he got the ball. Remember Minzy going. They trekked Sutty. Sunley, Mincy, the lads, Tret, Sutty different. He was the elite player. If you speak to any of that era, they'll say Sutty best player country. He toured Australia a year younger than himself, played fullback. Wow. So Sutty was the one where all the players just in Leeds would have said, oh yeah, Sutty and Stevie Ward are Tret different to us. They was the two players that were being earmarked for superstardom. Do I think Liam's... And I wonder if his mum and dad didn't think that when we first met. You know, Do I think Liam's become that world star? Probably not. But I think he's been an unbelievable player, an unbelievable person. He's never let Leeds down. He's 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 probably playing some at best rugby at the moment. Him and Ash, you know, him and Ash Shanley's probably at best. It, it, listen, could Sutter be an outside chance for England? Because you look at what they're saying this morning is that the England centres is going. The chest is bare. Percival's going to be injured. Harry Newman's injured. You've got the young lads coming up. You've got looking round. I'm looking. Who's better than Sutter? Would you play Bateman at centre before you play Liam? Would you play a Ben Curry? It's, you know, you look at it and you go, Callum. Would you play Callum at back row where he's killing it or would you put him centre before you play Sutty? I'd put Sutty up there. I'd like to see him. I think if you played Ash Hanley, you'd play Sutty. That's for, you know, Sean Wayne's the boss and he's Tom. But I tell you what, I'd like to see them too because there's a combination there. As for all, what a signing. What a signing for all. He'll be a revelation. Outside Truman, you're going to see some. You're going to see some football. So he's a pure footballer. Yeah, uh, relies on his his, his football now. Uh, so exciting for all fans to see them too. And the, you won't hear one for your own Sutty. You probably won't hear. In fact, I'm going to text him as we're on show, Joe, just so I don't forget that top. I don't think you'll hear anybody give a bad word in the game about Liam Sutcliffe. That's player coaches, Brian Mack. All his coaches, all his physios, all his conditions, all the players. He's the lads' favourite, Sutty. You mentioned Sutty to any player who's been at Leeds, they just put a smile on their face and just start laughing. There's not many people who walk away from, you know, do what he's done at Leeds with that. He hasn't, he's got friends. There's a lot of them leave Leeds, they don't give a shit. They do with him. And then the final question uh, Matt Shaw posed to us is, uh, the champ recruitment markets, it's obviously really heating up now it's the, it's champ time a lot of them have actually nearly finished their business um how busy is it with championship at the minute and uh what how, who appear to be the big movers 
Yo, yo, probably as well to to answer this. So I'll put it over to you. You know, what I've seen, it's so disorganised what they're all going to do. So it's so hard for teams to recruit heavily and strongly because they don't know the rules of the comp. If you don't know the rules of the comp, God help them. Yeah. So that's going to be next four week. Newcastle, they've been through. A, you know, it's horrendous. Featherston. If Lee go up, which we know the arc, you know, it'd be, it'd be a shock. Featherston and Halifax then become the favourites for the comp next year with Toulouse. You know, if it's going to go to franchise, why would you spend a million quid? So we've got to know the rules pretty quick. The reason no one's hiring in championship and not aggressively hiring, only Keithley. Keithley are all in because they're thinking, well, we can put ourselves in a position. Keithley, witness, witness, yeah, spend witness. A lot of money for there next you go. Year. And then, um, yeah, there's not many. There's not many others. Is there? We need to know the rules. If the if the rules come out and it's top eight in the championship, get a franchise or whatever they're, they're going to. You know, you might have to have your own ground. You might have to have your own academy. Whatever it is, it needs to be done quick. And I'm and that and and I, and, and I want to challenge IMG on this. And we've been quite productive with IMG. And we're here to promote the sport, but they put us some out on the rugby league thing. Somebody sent me. I don't do social media. Somebody sent me it saying. What do you think to two leagues? Yeah, the question. Like, yeah. What to the, the fans? Come on, yeah. come on. That's that's ridiculous. We need leadership. We don't want edging your bets. We've said it on this show two years ago. We made our call on this show that it had to go to franchise and, and do it. We've not backed off that. I know there's going to be casualties. There'll be 10 teams go amateur. Don't matter. For the benefit of the game. It's not, it's not about being about that one piece of pie. It's the big picture. They've got to save the game. That's ridiculous. We want leadership, IMG. We want proper leadership. We don't want somebody asking fans whether they think that's the right before they do it. They probably made their mind up. They're just edging the bets. We can do that with RFL. RFL, port, port, they're brilliant, the RFL, but the, they're not going to make them big calls. Historically, they found it hard because of what's happening in the game, the social media. Da, da, da. We brought IMG in to go, bang. Yep. And we need it. We need the Dana White. We need, we need something here that's going to lead us and it's going to be strong leadership. And at the moment, I'm hearing off all the clubs and everyone's just edging the bets. That's having a massive effect on the players. It's having a massive effect on retention. It's having a massive effect on recruiting. The mental health spinning out of control. These young lads don't know what they're going to do. Make some calls. Please make it quick yeah. so we all know what the comp is. So at least no... I know probably, I think one or two have made a couple, one or two signings now, but I know at least four or five clubs in champ that are openly not making any major signings until it gets decided well they've said it's not getting decided till mid-september time it's ridiculous so that means these play the, for the players standpoint it's a nightmare for them because a lot of them are out of contract in limbo at the moment aren't they and they've not got a place to go and they probably won't find out till mid-september once <laughs> once it all gets decided and they need to go <laughs> I just, there's no there's no debate is there there's no debate we've got the World Cup coming to our shores we need the World Cup it's the man. biggest thing ever and we need this deciding before we even talk about the World Cup because the will you know these clubs can be pulling players in front World Cup if you tell them what the, the plan is going forward you know the game can be on a high after a World Cup we need to hit it running so they need to know all the rules for next year to make it the best comp ever going into this new franchise era if we do do that don't be asking fans don't Every fan in any sport will do what's right for them and their club. Yeah, their club. So to mind. ask somebody to make a decision on the game, will it be good? If you're one of the clubs who are going to get ex exposed and, and eradicated, is a ridiculous. You'll also get people who don't... A lot of people haven't got a strong personality or opinion to do it. They won't want to say, yeah, you'll get the, the nutters, the 3% or bang, and just because they're controversial, but don't, we, don't want, we don't need this in the fans' hands. We don't need it in the administrator's hands. It's never worked. When they tried to get Robert Elston and they did that, it didn't work. They've got to make it into leadership. I can just, I just, when I saw it, I thought, can you imagine Dana White saying, I want to ask the fans, you know what I mean? Yeah, he asked the fans if they want some fights. And what does he say? No, that won't work. That won't, you know what I mean? <laughs> he, he, it's, it's done to, you know, he, he makes the calls. He makes the calls on what he thinks is best for that organisation. So please, IMG, uh, you know, make them calls, make them quick. And don't look back. Yeah, you know you, you won't be remembered in twenty years' time. You might be remembered for saving game. That's bigger than all our opinions, anyway. Brilliant. Well, yeah, interesting uh, inside the deal. 
thank you dad for giving us all that and uh yeah tune in to next i think we're doing the show tomorrow we're doing the full 80 tomorrow or um on monday again and yeah tune in and f- uh, follow like share and yeah let's get i'll, let, I, I, I'll leave them with a teaser joe we've got we've done a deal which we can't announce but it'll be it's one of my favorite deals to do it's the it's the money ball deal so hopefully next week we can announce it we've got a money ball deal that's happened to a big club and it's fantastic for the for the player it's fantastic for the club and it proves that you know clubs are still open looking into championship for players which excites us yeah means all you championship players you know the dream is still on yeah you've still got the dream thank you